Doing the Black Girls with Queen, I wanted to give a shout out to Ring IQ Boxing and remember to tune in to the motherfucking relay. Welcome to the motherfucking relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Ow! Okay, we'll start with this one. Ryan Garcia had this to say. He says, man, I'm just waking up, and I'm about to go on a run, and I check on YouTube because someone texted me Floyd Mayweather was talking shit. Floyd, I'm really sorry you got your feelings hurt that I said I'm not trying to be like you and that Pacquiao has a better legacy. Now, whether or not Ryan wants to be like Floyd or Manny is up to Ryan. That's his prerogative. Yeah. The interesting part of this story is assessing... Which one of those two guys actually does have the better legacy? They're both the most accomplished guys of their era, era of what era, was era, era. their time. The fact that Manny Pacquiao is still lingering here today certainly has to count for something as his last fight, he took down an undefeated champion. These are the facts. It's not my opinions, not my anecdotes. This is the truth of it, the whole truth. Here today, what, what is he, 40, 41 years old? old. Manny Pacquiao's not only still fighting, he's winning, and he's winning against world champions. It's got to count for something! What? Doesn't it? Doesn't what? To be completely honest, it's very difficult to get an objective analysis, an objective retrospect on both of these guys' legacies and how they compare with each other's when these were two of the most, if not the two most, polarized fighters of their time. At that time. You had the Manny faction, you had the Mayweather faction, and... You know, you couldn't have expected either side to say something nice about the other guy, when in truth, they were both great fighters. They're both great fighters who both have great legacies. But better still, there is the question of who had the better run. There is the question of who had the better legacy. I'm of the opinion, you can feel free to disagree, that ever since Maypac, there's been an active effort to diminish Floyd Mayweather's victory over Manny, which counts for something. It does. I know a lot of you guys don't want to admit that to yourselves, but it's the truth that the two guys actually met, fought, and an outcome was determined. A victor was decided. Yes, that counts for something. It matters. It doesn't count for everything, but it's certainly something that needs to be considered when we're assessing the both of these guys' legacies. That, you know what? Floyd actually fucking fought this guy. And he beat he him. He actually fucking beat this guy. If you want my take, and you're here, so I'll assume that you do. You know, it's not just that Floyd beat Manny. Not just. Because there are several examples out there of fighters that went on to be great fighters, all-time great fighters, who at some point in their career, early, middle, or late, were defeated by someone. Defeated by someone who doesn't have the legacy that they have. You know, Bernard Hopkins lost his very first professional match, and you'd be hard-pressed to find out what that guy's name is short of a trip to box wreck, and this is what we're talking about, that just because a guy like Bernard lost to some other guy, that doesn't mean that that guy's legacy is on par with Bernard's, in spite of him having beaten Bernard at some point in Bernard's career. Clinton Mitchell might have gotten the best of Bernard Hopkins way back when in 1988. But he certainly didn't go on to have a legacy like Bernard Hopkins, did he? No, Bill Clinton was a boxer. I didn't say Bill Clinton was a boxer. I said Clinton Mitchell. Oh, okay. Al Levino, Victor the Kid Ponce, Eddie Trujillo, Al Greenfield. These guys might have got the best of Henry Armstrong in what were the first five professional fights of his career. Henry Armstrong went on to become one of the all-time greats in the sport of boxing, the living, breathing embodiment of what a pound-for-pound -pound fighter is, looks like, and operates. These four guys, they might have got the best of Henry in what were four of his first five professional contests, but not a single one of them went on to have the legacy that he went on to have. So. It's not just beating the guy. Who were you leading up to beating the guy? And who were you when you beat the guy? Where was the guy? Where were you? And what happened thereafter? I think it counts for something that Floyd Mayweather Jr. beat Manny Pacquiao. It does. But if we're taking account of their legacies, we've got to take into account more than just their match. We've got to look at their careers as a whole. You know, I think of the four fights that Manny had with Juan Manuel Marquez. That's the same Juan Manuel Marquez that Floyd Mayweather Jr. ended up fighting upon his return to the ring, having taken a hiatus from the sport. Two years? I think about how Floyd and Manny have several common opponents. They do. You know, Floyd didn't struggle anywhere near as much with Juan Manuel Marquez 
as Manny did. I understand that Floyd came in a little over the scale. I get that. I get it. Better still, four fights on Manny Pacquiao's resume. Four of them are against this same guy. This same guy who could do little to nothing against Floyd Mayweather. Yet against Manny, all four of those fights were highly competitive. And the last one, he damn near killed Manny Pacquiao. Damn near killed him. Against Floyd, this guy, he was up the creek without a paddle. And this is a Floyd Mayweather who was coming off... Roughly two years of inactivity. It's got to count for something when we're cross-comparing these fighters' legacies that four fights on Manny Pacquiao's resume are against this same guy. This same guy that Floyd Mayweather Jr. handled easily, coming off of close to two years of inactivity. He took him easy. Juan was coming off of two victories in the lightweight division ahead of this fight with Floyd Mayweather. Some people don't give Floyd a whole lot of credit for this victory. I understand those people. I'm not even going to argue with you. It is true. Juan was coming from the lightweight division straight into the welterweight division. There is a precedence to question what exactly were Juan Manuel Marquez's abilities as a welterweight when he was just campaigning as a lightweight. I completely understand it. I get it. The interesting part about this, however, is that after losing to Floyd Mayweather in the welterweight division, Marquez had three fights thereafter. Three victories, none of which were in the welterweight division. He goes back up the welterweight for Manny Pacquiao, gives Manny Pacquiao hell. Once again, it's a competitive fight. It's a close fight. And Manny wasn't coming off of two years of inactivity like Floyd was when he fought Juan Manuel Marquez. Floyd's fight with Juan wasn't anywhere near as competitive as Manny's fights often were. And that third fight that Manny had with Marquez, in spite of Marquez not campaigning as a welterweight leading up to that fight, it was still close. It was still competitive. Whereas with Floyd, it was anything but. So what's that basically saying? That Floyd Mayweather Jr. can get off the couch and easily handle the kind of guys that you go life or death with. I mean, that's how that breaks down. That's what that means. This guy's coming off of two years of inactivity. He takes this guy easy. You fight this guy four times in what are close competitive contests. The last time, this guy knocks you out. Clean out. Floyd only needed one fight for this same guy. That counts for something, folks. I know you might not want it to, but it does. Manny Pacquiao had four fights with that same guy. Four. Regardless of the outcomes, they were always competitive. Whereas Floyd Mayweather Jr., he gets off the couch, he fights that same guy. Takes him easy. Handles him easy. It's got to count for something. You think about the Oscar De La Hoya fight and how Coca. Floyd Mayweather Jr., he made concessions to get that Oscar De La Hoya fight. He did. He fought Oscar at his weight on his term. Oscars. That was in 2007. Floyd Mayweather Jr. fought Oscar De La Coca at Oscar De La Coca's weight for what was the WBC Junior Middleweight title. You know, I think a lot of context is deliberately removed when people think about this fight that Floyd made sacrifices to get Oscar in the ring. The kind of sacrifices that your average PBC fighter today would never make. Exactly. These guys, they're all prima donnas. They don't pay their dues, don't want to pay their dues the way that Floyd paid his dues to become what he became. People tend to think that Floyd was always Money, money Mayweather. Mayweather. The A-side, he was always Money Mayweather. When this is the fight that put him on that path, making those concessions to Oscar, fighting Oscar at his weight for his belt, and still managing to beat him to secure the victory. Oscar was the A-side in that fight, folks, not Floyd. Floyd fought him at his weight, on his terms, for his belt, and still managed to beat him. That was before Manny and Oscar fought. Manny and Oscar fought the following year. And that fight, unlike this fight, was a severely weight-drained fighter who had no fucking business in the welterweight division. You outgrew this division a long fucking time ago. And what are you trying to convince me of? That it doesn't count towards Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s legacy that he fought Oscar at his weight, on his terms, for a title. Beat him on the cards at a time when Oscar's the A-side. He's the marquee fighter. It don't count. That doesn't count towards his legacy. But Manny beating him the following year at welterweight when Oscar clearly didn't belong at welterweight anymore. That does count towards Manny's legacy. This is what I mean. I don't think a lot of people view the legacy of these two fighters objectively because they're rivals. Ricky Hatton, 43-0 at the time. Undefeated when he fights Floyd Mayweather. Right? He moves up from junior welterweight to welterweight for this fight. Floyd takes him out. Two years later, he fights Manny Pacquiao. And I'm not trying to diminish Manny Pacquiao's victory over Ricky Hatton. I'm just saying it's got to count for something that Floyd Mayweather 
took this guy out first, beat this guy first, and when Floyd beat this guy, he was undefeated. I mean, what are we doing here? Are we giving Manny Pacquiao more credit than we're giving Floyd for guys that Floyd beat already? Is that what we're doing? It looks like it. You bring these two guys' names up in the same sentence, and what you're going to get is a lot of guys who want to split hairs over everything that Floyd Mayweather Jr. did. Everything from how he brushes his teeth to how much milk he pours in his cereal. Gross oversights when it comes to the legacy of this fighter. Both of these fighters. I love how Shane Mosley miraculously became old. As soon as Floyd Mayweather Jr. beat him, in spite of the shellacking Shane had just gave to Antonio Margarito in the welterweight division. The fight before. Not suddenly he's too fucking old for Floyd, right? Right. Well, was he too old for Manny when he fought him the following year? Because that's yet another guy that Floyd Mayweather Jr. beat before Manny threw a punch at the guy, you know? Yeah, no. These are their careers. These are their legacies that we're talking about here. This is what is in their professional records. Ahead of the Floyd Mayweather Jr. fight, Shane Mosley was coming off victories over Ricardo Mayorga and Antonio Margarito. Anybody who wants to question the state of Shane Mosley ahead of the Mayweather fight really should watch that Margarito fight. Because that was a thorough beating that he gave that guy. Whereas, ahead of the Pacquiao fight, not only are you coming off the loss to Floyd, you're coming off a draw with Sergio Mora at junior middleweight. So you have to come back down and fight Manny. At welterweight. Hey, I'm just giving you the facts. If we're gonna assess these guys' legacies and compare their legacies with each other, we've got to take into account all this different stuff, all these oversights that a lot of people conveniently make. Comes to these fighters. Things they conveniently overlook. I'm not asking you to like Floyd Mayweather as a person. I'm not asking you to be entertained by him as a fighter. Nah. You don't have to like this guy. The thing is, you liking this guy doesn't have a goddamn fucking thing to do with what's in these fighters' records and what their legacies are. It doesn't matter if you like a guy or you don't like a guy. The only relevance of that is how you treat the situation, how you treat the information. And I, you know, I think because a lot of guys don't really like Floyd as a person, they can't be objective when it comes to this fighter's legacy. That's what it is. You think I don't know that Manny Pacquiao beat Miguel Cotto before Floyd Mayweather Jr. did? You think I don't know that? All I'm saying is if that means something to you, that Manny got to that guy before Floyd did, does it mean something to you that Floyd got to Ricky and Oscar and Shane before Manny did? Ah! Does it mean something to you that Floyd Mayweather Jr. didn't struggle with Juan Manuel Marquez anywhere near as much as Manny did in their four fights and Floyd he was coming off the couch. He was. He took a two-year hiatus. Handled that guy easy. Manny can't say the same. These are the elements, the aspects of these guys' careers. The middle ground that allows us to assess their legacies. Because in case you forgot, Floyd Mayweather Jr. was already accomplished. Was already pound-for-pound pound king before he fought Manny Pacquiao. Beating Manny Pacquiao, that was just the icing on the cake. The cherry on top of what was already an accomplished career. It's not like Floyd's only claim to fame was beating Manny. That was only a part of his legacy. He was already very accomplished. The same as Manny, who's also very accomplished. Oh, Manny's been a champion in more weight classes than Floyd, but better still, Floyd beat him. And Floyd, like Manny, was very accomplished. Now, I remember immediately after the Maypac fight, the usual accusations being made how Floyd likes to wait fighters out. Right. Which is pretty fucking ridiculous when Manny is younger than Floyd Mayweather Jr. is, so Floyd sits on his hands, he's working against himself and doing the younger guy favors. Manny Pacquiao, who's the younger guy? You know, Floyd waited till Manny got knocked out by Marquez before he fought him. Whose fucking fault is it that Marquez slept? Manny got knocked out by Juan. That's Floyd's fault. He did it. It's Floyd's fault that a guy who you fought three times already managed to get you in the fourth fight. That's Floyd's fault. What are you, an idiot? What kind of fucking standards are these? And lest we forget the shoulder injury. I'm going to tell you something. Even if you believe that Manny approached that fight with an injured shoulder, even if you buy into that, guess what? Manny wasn't the first fighter that had to go into a fight with an injury, and he certainly isn't going to be the last, okay? Wasn't George Groves' his shoulder injured when he fought Chris Eubank Jr.? Yeah. But he still beat Chris Eubank Jr., didn't he? Yeah. Jado Ramirez got injured in the midst of the Jesse Hart fight. The rematch. But he still beat Jesse Hart, didn't he? Yeah. So spare me the violin solo when it comes to Manny and his shoulder injury. I'm not even sure that his shoulder was injured, but even if it was, that's really no excuse. And there's a reason that you guys had to make excuses for it in the first fucking place. Comes to Manny and Floyd, 
They're too polarized. You're not gonna get the kind of objectivity you'd need to make an accurate assessment of how both of these guys' legacies, their careers, compare, contrast with each other. Floyd Mayweather Jr. can't get a fair shake with some people, and that's because they don't like him. Floyd Mayweather Jr. is not as likable a fixture in boxing as Manny Pacquiao is. To this day, Manny Pacquiao is beloved. Gonna lose. But to say that because he is loved, his legacy is thereby made greater than Floyd's, that's inaccurate. We're assessing their legacies as boxers, not their legacies your favorites. as fan favorites. This really isn't about you and what you like. It's about them and how their careers compare with each other. Thus, the parameter, the guidelines, are already implied. It's not about you and what you fucking like. It's about how their careers compare and contrast as boxers. That while Manny may have become a champion in more weight classes than Floyd, and he's still lingering around here today beating world champions at the end of the day floyd mayweather jr fought the same level of competition as manny and he actually beat manny and unlike manny he doesn't have any of the career blemishes he doesn't have any of the asterisks that you guys were doing what you were doing parallel to each other at the same time simultaneously for years and this guy consistently was able to compete at a level of excellence that even you could not match that counts for something i'll tell you that here today i feel that floyd mayweather jr has the slightly better legacy there is room for manny to maybe continue doing great things and and those things will require further review what i can't tell you is that manny has a better legacy than floyd's based on what losing to floyd let's we forget this assessment was inspired, sparked by Ryan Garcia's comments that he'd rather have a legacy like Manny Pacquiao's as opposed to Floyd's. Okay, you can have that. It's your, it's your career. It's your preference. Your funeral. Whatever you want to do is up to you. But to imply that Manny's legacy is greater than Floyd's? I can't agree with that. Not based on the facts. And as you all know, we're pretty fact-oriented around here.